A game that holds a special yet somewhat cursed place in my memory is Feral Heart. If you were a kid on the internet in the 2010s who liked wolves and or free MMOs like me, you probably know this game all too well. It's one of those cheap Unity games, the textures aren't particularly nice, the map is kind of a mess and the character models are very 2011, but it remains extremely charming in its own way and incredibly nostalgic. Like I think that opening title music is seared into my brain at this point. But it turns out that Feral Heart is just one of many in the 2000s neon emo deviantart furry role playing game genre. We'll be covering these games today from Feral Heart to Impressive Title and all the knockoffs in between. One thing they all have in common? Fraught, drama filled histories and spectacular downfalls. What are these games and why did they all die? Let's find out. Let's start with the game that spawned a thousand games. Impressive Title came out in 2008 and was honestly a pretty big achievement in terms of game creation. I guess you could say it was… impressive. Title. The game is an expansive open world in which you play as a lion. You can customize your character and find accessories to dress up with as well as being able to explore, hunt and join prides. If you played Impressive Title or Feral Heart, it really wasn't about the gameplay or the mechanics or the graphics. I mean it was all fine, it was pretty bare bones in very 2008, but the main draw of the game was the role playing. And many a scene kids spent their evenings on the family PC trying not to let their mum see the epic wolf romance which was unfolding in their role play. The game was made by one developer Kovu LKD who originally created it for him and his friends before opening it to the public. The art style was heavily inspired by The Lion King if you couldn't tell and while it gained controversy due to alleged breach of copyright or art style theft, it gained a huge surge in popularity when it was announced on The Lion King fan art archive for the first time in 2008. Man, the 2000s internet was a weird place. Impressive title got very popular. It's unknown exactly how many people had downloaded or played the game but at one point the forum reached a peak number of 11,755. This is very impressive for a game with just a single developer and the game was slowly becoming part of the deviantart furry culture. But you know what they say, security breach is always around the corner. Yep, that's what they always say. Impressive title had been made with a small friend group in mind and Kovu LKD did not expect the sun surge of users. Because of this, anyone could access the game's coding, which was not great. This led to account hacking, server attacks, item stealing, and general goofballery. I mean, if you can hack the game and totally punk your friends by filling the game with flying bird crystals, why the hell wouldn't you? Even after the code was made more secure, optimization issues, scams, moderation problems, and more ran rampant, and in 2010, impressive titles shut down. Enter Feral Heart in 2011. Kovu LKD had made a comeback in a big way. The fans had been left in limbo for nearly two years but the appearance of Feral Heart caused waves around the internet. Well, at least waves around this particular community. Feral Heart was a spiritual successor to Impressive Title and had improved on the previous formula while keeping all the aspects that players loved. Extensive customization, a vast explorable world, and in-depth chat and roleplay systems. The art style was more realistic and catered to a much wider audience with its inclusion of wolves as playable species. The game had removed some of the hunting and item collection mechanics, but as I said, gameplay really took a backseat to customization and roleplay. One cool aspect of Feral Heart was its appeal to creatives. The game had a map maker, a sky maker, and even an item maker with users able to import their own custom drawn sky or topographical map into the game. This allowed players to create highly customized private maps for their friends or roleplay groups. This is still a really neat feature to me and still very technically impressive. Feral Heart was very popular. In the early days, servers would regularly push 2000 players, which doesn't seem like a lot, but keep in mind this was a completely free game for an at the time very niche user base made by a single developer. The community was pretty large with a bustling forum whose users would regularly create in-jokes, artwork, and Feral Heart roleplay groups on DeviantArt. The game was flourishing, being updated frequently with new content, and it seemed like things could really only go up for the game. However, in early 2012, Kovu L KD disappeared. Without a trace, the developer of Feral Heart left. No goodbye, no update, 
nothing, and he took the game's source code with him. The community, both players and staff, were shocked and left in limbo. With no source code, the staff couldn't update the game, and with the developer missing, players were uncertain of the game's future. This would continue for the next two years, with no word at all from Kovu. Players made threads asking where he was, and the admins had no answer. Some even thought that he had died. So where on earth had the developer gone? Well, it turns out that Kovu wasn't dead. The first clue came when users found that he had last logged into his forum profile in 2013, a year after his disappearance. Kovu would remain silent until 2014 with a Facebook post. In the post, Kovu apologized for his disappearance. In quotation marks for some reason, I mean, you were gone two years, just kind of skimmed over that. He explained that he had started an office job and was extremely busy with work and life, it's so busy that he couldn't update his unpaid volunteer staff that he was leaving, I guess. You know, those office jobs, <laughs> they, uh, they never let you leave the office, ever. He also dropped the bombshell that he had instead directed his attention onto making a Facebook game called Feral Tales, essentially a 2D Facebook browser adaption of Feral Heart. Also, I'm sorry my accent is making it sound like I'm saying Fero Heart or like Feral Heart. I just, I can't say that full word. <laughs> As a final punch in the gut, he said he wanted to distance himself from the moderated drama that had been happening and wouldn't be working on Feral Heart anymore, nor would he be sharing the code with anyone. The reception was... bad. People were understandably angry that he'd been missing for two years only to reveal he had essentially abandoned the game to work on a shitty Facebook game. I mean, to be fair, it was 2014 and grandma was poking you because it was your turn in Zynga poker and you were shoving dad off the family PC to check on your Farmville crops, but in hindsight, the decision to move the franchise onto Facebook was an ill-fated one. The game did come out on Facebook, but was buggy and broken to the point where it was unplayable for most and was never fixed. He updated his Facebook a few days later after the original post and after that, nothing. He deleted his DeviantArt, he deleted his forum account, and he has never been seen again. Feral Tales remained an unplayable mess and was scrapped, and the source code was never handed over or made public in any way. So why did Kovu leave? It's one thing to want to move on from your old projects to greener pastures, but to leave a whole community and go MIA for two years is in a whole other league. There are some theories. On Kovu's Facebook page, he frequently made passive-aggressive posts towards the server host post Rasmus. It was believed by some that an argument or growing tension had caused Kovu to spitefully leave the game in the hands of Rasmus, taking the source code with him to punish the server host. Others believe that Kovu was pressured into adding a large update into the game to include wings, which he was supposedly against and wanted to keep the game realistic. Uh, yeah, sure. According to this theory, the demand from the community was so much that he felt forced to make the update, losing all creative control that he had. However, my theory is a much simpler one. I think that Kovu simply stopped caring about the game. He was young when he created it, and it was very much a product of its time. It's like when someone texts you and you can't be bothered replying and put it off so long that when you go to reply, you'll have to kind of awkwardly explain why it took you weeks to reply, and so to avoid the awkwardness, you just keep putting it off Forever. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened, but like, but with a furry wolf MMO. With no developer and no source code, Feral Heart exists in a state of limbo. While the game has been active for nearly 10 years at this point, it's a shell of what it once was, with the player count regularly dropping below 10. While some believe that Kovu will one day return, it's doubtful, and even if he did, there would no longer be a community of thousands to welcome him back. It's likely that the game will continue to decline and fall into a state of disrepair until the server costs are no longer sustainable. However, it remains as both a nostalgic relic to those who spent their youth in the game and a window into the internet subculture at the time. While Kofu LKD's development career would stop there, this would not be the last game in the genre and other developers would take up the mantle with similarly fraught results. Arokai is a strange and bizarre installment in the genre. One of the first impressive title clones to come out by a new developer who was not Kovu LKD, the game was developed by a user called Superfish. Arokai started development around 2009 and was slated to be an open world MMORPG with extensive customization, a large map, and in-depth roleplay elements. Sound familiar? 
well, it's because all these games are the exact same, but Arakai set itself apart with a multitude of new species. The game would include the classic lion and wolf species, but would also have owls, bears, deer, griffins, and dragons. The animations and character models in Arakai are great. They're a little dated at this point, but honestly, I think they hold up pretty well. The game was going to have more of a storyline with lore, NPCs, quests, and an alignment system separating it from the competition. Arakai had its own forum, and users were being updated by a Superfish's DeviantArt and Arakai streams, where she would work on 3D models and development. It had been a few years since the project had started, but progress seemed steady and users were being updated frequently. That is, until 2011 when Superfish did a kovu and completely disappeared. However, surprisingly, Superfish reappeared a few months later in early 2013, reassuring the community that she was still working on the game and development continued. And. You are not ready for the Fight Club shit that happened next. Sorry if this next part is now gonna spoil Fight Club for you, but it's been 10 years, that's really on you. Basically what I'm saying is everything about Arokai was a complete lie. It turns out that when Superfish disappeared in 2011, she never came back. The Superfish that re-emerged in 2013 was an impersonator. And I don't mean impersonator as in some goofball little troll pretending to be Superfish, I mean impersonator as in they fooled all of the community and all of the staff for years and scammed players out of money. For over 5 years, the Superfish account was run by a user called Kahara, who got access to the admin password and hacked into her accounts in 2011. Recounts by admins, moderators, and artists at the time all share a common theme. The forums were bustling and updates were being made to string players along, but behind the scenes communication was non-existent. And when asked to help with modeling or asked how she modeled something, Kahara suddenly couldn't get Blender to work or couldn't explain how she had done certain things. In 2011, right after taking over Superfish's account, Kahara supposedly lost all the files for Arakai in a hard drive crash, giving her an excuse for why she couldn't provide game files when asked. The worst part is that staff had been communicating with Superfish on Skype for over five years, completely unknowing that they were talking to a stranger. Oh wait, no, the worst part is that all the money and donations for the project went completely missing. And by missing, I mean Kahara stole it. Now this story is so bizarre and it leaves so many questions. One theory is that Kahara and Superfish were the same person, which I feel like I'm in a Christopher Nolan movie. This theory has some things going for it, like Kahara and Superfish's weird history of combined usernames and alternate accounts, but it also makes very little sense considering Superfish could 3D model competently and often did so on streams, yet Kahara was shown to have very little knowledge on the topic. Another theory was proposed that Superfish, wanting to leave the project due to stress and pressure, handed the project over to Kahara. But why hand ownership to Kahara, a random with no game development experience rather than one of the more experienced staff? Also, if ownership was being transferred, Superfish would have sent the game code to the team, which she never did. That leaves the theory that Kahara really did hack into the game and take over Superfish's account, which I'm most inclined to believe, but if so, why didn't Superfish say anything after? After the hack. The real Superfish had to have known Kahara had taken over the admin account and was in contact with the staff, a lot of whom were Superfish's friends, so why did Superfish never contact any of them to tell them that she'd been hacked and they were talking to an imposter? Whatever way you look at it, it's an extremely bizarre situation and it's fair to say that Arokai had one of the strangest and most treacherous downfalls of any online game in recent memory. Now, Serial Soup is interesting because it's probably one of the most successful out of these games. Okay, that's kind of a lie. Serial Soup is the last of our open world animal MMOs and it took huge inspiration from Arokai, essentially picking up where it left off. It's run by a small team of developers and has been chugging along since 2015. It includes wolves, lions, birds, and meerkats, which I appreciate for the sheer cuteness factor. It has a lot more actual gameplay than any of the other games mentioned, including an aging system, combat mechanics, and even a bounty system, but it absolutely has its flaws. The game is notorious hard to run, with a huge number of Steam reviews simply complaining about how they can't even get the game to boot up. There are also very weird quirks in the system like this warning to not use numbers in your email, username, or password, which is concerning. 
There were also memory leaks, crashes, and even rumors of the game stealing user data. Serial Soup has also had a pretty fraught development. The game has been involved in multiple dramas, including a supposedly pretty nasty ongoing spat with Feral Heart. Feral Heart was accused of banning people for even mentioning Serial Soup, while Serial Soup has been accused of directly ripping off 3D models and textures from Arokai and Feral Heart, which like, big if true, but this information came from a call-out blog on Tumblr called Serial Poop, so you know. The game was also accused of hacking Feral Heart, which caused a very public argument between the two sides. You could say things really <laughs> went to the wolves. <laughs> With the last post on their Tumblr blog being nearly a year ago, the forums essentially defunct and the Steam download broken, things aren't looking great for the game. This story is not a spectacular downfall, but a slow decline and one that symbolizes the death of a genre. Serial Soup never really got big and that's because the genre simply went out of fashion around 2015. The last hope of a genre revival died with Arokai and Serial Soup is one of the few remnants of this hope, but it paints an almost sad picture of the state of this once bustling community in the game games that they loved. This genre was huge in the late 2000s and early 2010s and boy what a time it was. Everyone had seen here, MySpace was filled with so many deep quotes that it looked like an Olympic dive pool and everyone who was anyone who had a DeviantArt had a neon sparkle wolf character. Impressive title, Feral Heart, Arokai and Serial Soup are all products of their time and while their memories have faded into obscurity as their players have grown up, I'm glad for their memories. This video is not meant to bash these games or the developers at all, I love these games with a passion and I still love them for all their 2000s DeviantArt charm. Anyway, they're an extremely niche but incredibly unforgettable bit of nostalgia and early internet history that I thought you guys would enjoy. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it and I really hope to see you in the next one. Bye!